Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. I, I'd like to, first of all, um, tell you a little bit about our guest speaker this evening. Um, our CEO and President, Leslie Stevens, is going to be um, giving you an overview, a Healthy Start overview, and I, I know you guys are going to love it. I want you to know that we do have an open Q&A, so um, on your Zoom platform, there's a button down at the bottom that has the Q, that says Q&A. Please use that Q&A and feel free to ask questions. Um, the great thing about it is that it will record your questions. And if by chance there's not enough time this evening for us to get to all of your questions, it will record them and we will um, get to those questions just as soon as we can. So let me start off by telling you just a little bit about Leslie Stevens. Um, as I mentioned, she is the CEO and president of Healthy Start. She's a mother of three. Her goal and desire is to provide every advantage for children to allow them to live healthy and happy lives. I'm not sure if you know or not, but there is a silent epidemic affecting 9 out of 10 children, and this epidemic manifests itself in a variety of symptoms that can be easily overlooked, misdiagnosed, and most unfortunately left untreated. So it's absolutely critical that children are being evaluated for sleep and breathing habits. Leslie is not only our fearless leader, she lectures and trains all over the world. I mean, she's really just everywhere. I mean, I don't think that there's a question in reference to the subject of pediatric sleep, breathing, airway, and Healthy Start's connection that she cannot answer. And, you know, really when you have a, the backing of a company like Healthy Start or Arthur Tame, you have 51 plus years, over 4 million cases, and tons of research to back you. Um, Leslie's mission is to educate both parents and oral physicians to ensure children a lifetime of health, happiness, and success. So at this time, I'd like to go ahead and hand the floor and the mic over to Leslie. Great. Thank you so much, Susie. And um, I am just thrilled to be here tonight with all of you and to maybe shed some light on pediatric sleep and airway. And um, we'll kind of get started right now. So anyways, tonight, what I'd love to talk to you about is my passion, basically. Um, I spend most of my life um, educating doctors, traveling, um, talking to parents, talking to patients, and basically educating them on what pediatric sleep, breathing, and airway really means. Um, so many times we look at dentistry or orthodontics as looking to see how beautiful teeth are, or to look into a person's um, physical attributes and comment on their face, on their um, teeth, and this and that. But what we're going to talk about tonight is something that's even more important. Yes, behind every beautiful smile should be a healthy, happy child. And being able to address the issues that might be occurring in a child that typically a parent is not even aware of is what we want to talk about tonight and talk about how the dental professional is basically the oral physician, the expert in the oral cavity, and understanding the health and the underlying root causes that affect the health of a child just by looking at different areas of growth and development, improper habits, and obviously, and maybe most importantly, creating proper habits. So as you know, the ADA has been wonderful, basically, in their pursuit of this area of treatment. Um, they basically passed a policy a year ago, October in 2017, um, that basically requires each and every dentist to look at airway of a child, to look at improper growth and development, and educating themselves on breathing, sleeping, and airway. So it's a pretty monumentous task, but so critical. And I think as we continue this pursuit, we're going to see more and more opportunities for the dental professional to impact this area of treatment. So when we look at our population right now, our research has indicated that nine out of 10 children exhibit one or more outward symptoms of sleep. So what are these outward symptoms of sleep? Well, they can include mouth breathing, snoring, teeth grinding, swollen adenoids, tonsils, chronic allergies, eczema, asthma, ADD, ADHD, aggressive behavior, depression, irritability, anger, pair problems, few friends, bedwetting. That's an interesting one, and we'll talk about it in a minute. 
difficulty in school, and I want to emphasize it specifically in these subjects, math, science, spelling, and even reading, um, delayed or stunted growth, restless sleep, nightmares, morning headaches, daytime drowsiness, frequently wakes up at night, sleep talking and walking. This is truly a silent epidemic that affects each and, one, each and every one of us. We all have someone that we know that has these outward symptoms. And maybe you haven't realized it before that they are outward symptoms of something that could be more um, critical in their health and their development. So when we look at these outward symptoms, I'm always so concerned because I talk to parents and they say, absolutely, I've noticed this in my child. Um, we go to an asthma specialist. We see our allergist. Um, my child was diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. There are medications for this. So typically a parent will look at these in isolations, these outward symptoms, rather than possibly linking them together to maybe a more significant underlying root problem. So typically parents are looking to address these outward symptoms by a variety of different drugs. Um, they can do psychiatric psychiatric testing, um, counseling, therapy, surgery, sleep studies, allergy testing, special education. There's a whole onslaught. But what the takeaway is, we're, we're looking at isolated outward symptoms instead of looking them at maybe as a whole or an indication of something more serious. Um, tendency is when we look at a lot of these um, ways we address these outward symptoms, we're really looking at band-aids rather than looking at the underlying root cause. And unfortunately, band-aids sometimes can be short-term and they definitely cannot be permanent. Um, many times they uh, involve several drugs. Um, and unfortunately, many of these drugs have side effects. Um, and most importantly, they can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and in many instances, ineffective. So when we talk about the outward causes of these outward symptoms, what are we really referring to? Well, we're looking at mouth breathing or the habits that happen. Um, we look at mouth breathing as not utilizing probably the most important or one of them, and that's the ability to nasal breathe. Nasal breathe, we'll talk about what that means. Um, also a narrow palate. Um, we have a narrow palate, that means the tongue can't be in the right place. And then we look at the jaw relationships, um, deficiency and growth. So taking what we kind of know in sleep and understanding that um, the deficiencies that are occurring in the oral cavity, as well as improper habits that occur, can lead to more serious problems. So how do we screen for it? How do we have this conversation with the parent? And most importantly, how we're going to address it in a patient. So let's talk about screening for sleep. The first and most important clue is just facial recognition. Let's just look at a child. Let's pinpoint some of these items that we can just immediately identify. So take this girl on the left, look at the dark circles under our eyes. Look how the head is lurched forward. These are all indications. Look at this boy, dark circles. Look at the separated lips, a mouth breather. Look at the rolled lip. We also look at this boy and say, wow, kind of looks a little heavy. This boy is not heavy. It's just, it has the appearance because of the way the jaws are placed in more of a retrusive position. Let's look at the profile of the child. Look at how the forehead and let's get down to the lower third. Do you see the deficiencies that we see? We see a rolled lip, we see lips parted. We also see circles under the eyes. The girl on the right, look at this. We have the rolled lip, but look at how the chin and the neck blend together. There's no definition. Lips are parted. These are all things that we should be identifying just as a child even enters your office. And then we can kind of in our mind go through, hmm, I have a suspicion that probably a mouth breather. I have a suspicion that they are basically retrusive or um, have not gained the proper growth and development. We need more forward development of the jaws. Um, possibly a narrow palate. If you're seeing mouth breathing, we probably assume that. 
So we'll ask a parent to help us with this diagnosis. Obviously, we can't come home with the child and see how they sleep, identify some of the things that might be occurring during their sleeping hours. So we'll give them a sleep questionnaire. And what makes the Healthy Start Sleep Questionnaire so unique is these are 27 of the most um, prevalent outward symptoms of sleep. So the parent will identify these, and it's a great learning experience because parents will start looking at these and say, wow, yeah, my kid talks in, um, in their sleep, and yes, they bed wet, and oh my gosh, I had absolutely no idea these all could be related. At the same time, we're gonna ask them to basically provide a degree of severity for each one of these conditions, and it will be ranked from zero to five, five being the most pronounced. We will also go to the last question, number 27, about speech problems. Yes, obviously, if you're not breathing right, the tongue is not in the right place, um, speech can be affected. And so we will ask parents to also identify these. Um, interesting enough, sometimes parents don't even realize their child have difficulty in speech because they're around them all the time. So it might be a delicate conversation that you have, but if you're not understanding that patient and you have difficulty understanding them, you might delicately bring that up to a parent and, and see if there is teachers recommending this or maybe there's a speech therapist involved, but it's a conversation to obviously get the awareness um, for both the parent and the patient so we're understanding what we're identifying and how we're addressing. So an interesting study that Healthy Start um, conducted along with Brooke Stevens and Dr. Earl Bergerson basically evaluated 501 children and to see exactly what that screening tool could identify with and what symptoms we saw as being most prevalent and if there was any kind of associations with certain um, outward symptoms. So what the study revealed was that mouth breathing and snoring are commonly associated with more sleep disorder breathing symptoms than any other symptom study. Really important. So if you see a mouth breather, you realize there's probably a whole litany of other issues that are going to occur. We also found that nine out of 10 children had one or more outward symptoms of sleep disorder breathing. Huge statistic, a lot of kids. In the United States alone, that represents 40 million children. <sighs> Unbelievable. Um, we also found 60% of the sample had four or more symptoms. One out of five children experienced bedwetting. Now that's an interesting one because we don't typically talk about bedwetting. But think about it this way. In a classroom of 20 children, four children will be bedwetters. That's, that's kind of outrageous to me. I, I had no idea it was that common. And these are kids at a later age who are still bedwetting. So understanding that bedwetting is linked to sleep is really critical. It might be a difficult conversation. Um, we find parents sometimes will not even indicate that on the sleep questionnaire because they just don't feel comfortable sharing that information. Um, typically, if a child comes down, I'll say, wow, you know, we have these outward symptoms. And I said, um, many times we see kids that also bedwet at a later age. I only say that statement and I watch for the reaction in the parent. I usually can tell right off if bedwetting is an issue and they just didn't want to share. And, and we'll gradually work through that conversation because we want to see the changes that happen in that child and be able to provide them. Um, with some guidance so we can see if this is a contributing factor to the bedwetting. Um, the last one, very um, important statistic for a parent. Between the ages of four and 12, 92.6% of the out outward symptoms do not self-correct and 30% worsen with age. So what that means is if you see it, you treat it. It is very rare that the symptom will self-correct. Too often do we hear parents say, you know what, we'll just wait. Let's just wait and see. Well, the child's struggling. And waiting, obviously, is not going to help. So if we can give them the statistics that will help them make a good decision for their child 
and hopefully move them forward to identifying and treating or looking for the treatment for their child, more power to us. So here are some interesting um, statistics on some of those outward symptoms. But the first item is very interesting. We'll talk about this again later on. Mouth breathing during sleep. If a child opens their mouth by a half an inch, it basically reduces the airway by six millimeters. An average seven-year-old has a seven millimeter airway. So that means that child is trying to breathe at night through one millimeter of airway. That's like trying to breathe through a coffee stirrer. I don't know if you've ever tried it. I, I actually did a little study. I thought, wow, let me see how difficult this is and what the um, side effects would be. So I was planning on breathing through a coffee stirrer all day long. Well, I made maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And let me tell you, I had the most massive headache I've ever had. Could I get rid of it? No, I took Excedrin, et cetera, nothing, nothing worked. So I can only imagine how difficult it would be for a child to experience that during night, have to get up, have to get to school, have to perform at school and feel that way day in and day out. So it, it's a interesting concept. I, I love the visual of the coffee stir because it really brings home to a parent. Um, some doctors have them at their office and say, give it a whirl, see how well you do. And they realize how difficult it is just to get enough oxygen and to feel like you're not hyperventilating. So interesting. So what we found out also is if a child mouth breathes at night, they will have an average of seven other outward symptoms. If a child mouth breathes during the day and night, they'll have eight other outward symptoms. And here are some of those other outward symptoms that we see associated with the mouth breathing. So what are the implications of the study? Well, the findings show that sleep disorder breathing is much more common and affects children even as young as two years of age. Begin treatment as early as possible to ensure permanent changes and identifying outward symptoms displayed in 90% of the children that enter your practice can significantly reduce this epidemic and enable you to success, uh, successfully treat the overall health of your patients. What a service. And I would encourage you to go beyond, beyond the walls of your practice. This is definitely an area that you can impact your community. You can change the lives of these children. And that's what we're talking about. I, I'm sure all of you as dentists have wanted to go into this profession in order to change the lives of your patients. Believe me, this will be the greatest change. There's nothing better than having a kid race up to you, put their arms around you and thank you. Nothing better that a mom comes up to you and is just crying because not only did you change the life of your child, but you probably changed the life of their family. What's the, what's the comment that parents make? You're only as happy as your, um, the child that's struggling the most. And these kids, believe me, are struggling. So anyways, let's talk now about what is airway? What is sleep? What is breathing? What does this have to do and how do we address it? So looking at the airway, looking at how you breathe, looking at your sleep, basically many times are a result of the habits that we just talked about. We spoke briefly about what happens and how difficult it is to breathe when you're breathing through a one millimeter airway. And again, we talked about the coffee stir and the versus maybe a good image for a normal airway would be more like a garden hose. Why is this happening? Why do we have this epidemic? Well, unfortunately, it's a result of industrialization and how our lives have changed. How many times do we look in the grocery store and everything melts in your mouth? There is no chewing. The oral cavity develops with more of that chewing motion. Um, you know, um, we, if we could chew on something that was hard, um, steak. How many times do kids say, oh, it's too tough. I don't want to chew it. 
Well, that chewing motion helps to expand the arches and creates the proper and the volume that we would normally associate with the oral cavity. We also see that there's a lack of breastfeeding. Um, a difficult conversation, something you should kind of um, walk lightly. Um, every mom always assumes it's their fault. If a child is struggling, they must have done something wrong. Well, this is society. Um, more than likely both parents work. I mean, it's very rare you ever hear a mom that says, I breastfed for two years. Um, many will say, well, I fed them with the bottle, but I was able to pump breast milk. The bottle is a problem. It's the nipple on the bottle. It depresses the tongue. It also creates a suction in the mouth, so the arches narrow with that suction. Kind of the same situation that happens with the pacifier depressing the tongue, creating suction, these are all altering the development of the oral cavity and creating improper habits that we are seeing associated with this issue of sleep, breathing, and airway. So what other things can we look at in a child? We looked at the outward physical um, characteristics, but we should also look at the oral cavity and look at the dentition. If you see a child that has a tendency for an open bite, Right off the bat, you probably can assume that it's a result of extended use of pacifiers, of nipple bottles, um, possibly finger sucking. Um, this child is a mouth breather, um, probably a tongue thruster as well. So you're going to have a whole litany of habits that we're going to need to address during the treatment of this child. Um, Showing a parent maybe a little bit of the anatomy helps them understand. So you have the nasal cavity and how this operates. The hard palate versus the soft palate. How the tongue impacts um, the airway that we see and um, the function of breathing and um, uh, sleeping. Um, talking about mouth breathing so often, we really need to focus on the nose because we are trying to nasal breathe rather than mouth breathe. Why do we nasal breathe? What is the importance? Well, the nose has five functions. It serves as an air passageway. It warms and moistens inhaled air. Um, the membrane traps dust, pollen, bacteria, and other foreign matter, contains receptors that sort out odors, and it helps in the quality and the pronunciation in the voice. So it does aid in so many different features, but it is imperative that we train our children to start breathing through their nose and eliminating the mouth breathing that occur in half of the population. Um, here again, how many times do you see this type of um, child conked out on the car seat? Well, the study that we did basically shows that nine-time mouth breathing is present in 43% of the sample of 500 children. This is an excellent um, video that we'll show. It's Eli, basically, and you can see what happens as he struggles to breathe. And please realize, again, that this situation is going, it is going to remain the same in 92.6% of the population and 30% will actually worsen with age, which is kind of hard to believe once you hear it, Eli. So let me start this video so you that can take a listen. It. That was holding it. He's still holding it. He's trying to take in air. There he goes. And now watch, he's holding it, he's holding it, he's holding it, he's holding it. He's still holding his breath, and now he's going to gulp again. There he goes. That was it again. And again. He's holding. He's holding. He's trying. There he goes. So this has been three minutes and 15 seconds, and you can see how many episodes he's had of not getting calm breaths in. Now watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. If I can, let's see if I can. I hope that's the airway. Just bring his airway forward. Airway, I'm 
opening his airway, just pulling his jaw forward ever so slightly. And now he's breathing through his nose quietly. His mouth is a little bit open, but he's breathing through his nose. Just by hear how quietly he's breathing, you don't hear him anymore. And all I did is gently bring his jaw forward. So how interesting is that? So part of Healthy Start is doing that mechanics of bringing the lower jaw forward, opening up the airway, providing nasal breathing rather than mouth breathing. All of these things are happening with Eli. And that mom was so brilliant to even figure that out in order to help that child so that they have a more restful. Um, today, I actually was in a doctor's office and the first thing the doctor and his staff said when they saw this is, look how relaxed that child looked like after that lower jaw and he was able to breathe. That's exactly what you see when you put the first appliance in in the Healthy Start system is almost a relaxed state comes over the child because they can actually get the oxygen they need. It puts them calm, it relaxes them, it um, puts them in a better state of sleep. So very interesting. So again, we were talking a little bit about airway, um, expanding the airway, opening up the airway. You've, seen, you've heard a lot of these terminologies. So when we look at these cephalometrics, look on the left, we see a restricted airway. Well, 21% of your population will have a restricted airway. And um, obviously it will impact the way they breathe. So the idea is we have to move them and treat them in order to open up the airway and create a normal airway. So we talked a little bit about habitual problems, mouth breathing, how severe that is. Well, if we know nine out of 10 children have one or more outward symptoms of sleep, and we already know that 21% will have a constricted airway, what makes up the other balance? Well, they're probably habitual issues, especially mouth breathing. So when a child, they could have a typically normal airway, but as soon as they mouth breathe and open up their mouth by a half an inch, they restrict that airway. So for instance, a seven-year-old has a seven millimeter airway. So if we're gonna restrict six millimeters of it, that means this child is trying to breathe through one millimeter of airway. That's what's happening at night when a mouth breather is sleeping. So what does a normal, what is a seven millimeter airway look like and what does one millimeter of airway? Well, take a look here. Here is an ideal airway for a seven-year-old, seven millimeters. Pretty small, right? Well, look what happens when we restrict it down to one millimeter. It's like a pinhole. I mean, I don't know about you, but how in the heck is that going to accomplish what we need to accomplish? Obviously, we see how it impacts a child. So here's an interesting case that basically was able to use the habit corrector and what we are accomplishing with the Healthy Start treatment. So interesting, when we look at a CBCT scan, and, and I will make a note, we're only as good as the tools we have. We can all poke arrows on what makes a tool good, what makes it bad. Right now, the negative part of a cephalometric or a CBCT scan is that it takes the image in a vertical position. So it's not really identifying when a child sleeps in the horizontal. We know the muscles relax, the airway closes more. So basically when we see these images, I would just interpret that it probably gets worse when they go to sleep. So when we see this image, we have a, an average that um, kind of the world has agreed on, on how to determine what an average airway would be. So it usually starts in children starting at age five. We multiply their age by 10 to get the average airway. So for instance, if you're a nine-year-old, you would anticipate to have an airway of the age nine times 10 equals 90 square millimeters. 
well, this particular child is a nine-year-old and has a 53.6 square millimeter airway. So obviously compromised, less than what you would anticipate for that age patient. When a child develops, we know that at age 17, we kind of peak out. So we anticipate an adult's airway to be anywhere between 150 and 170 square millimeters. And bad news is at age 21, our airway starts to deteriorate. So the question has always been in an adult patient, especially one with sleep apnea, um, did they ever reach their optimal of 150 to 170 or were they compromised to begin with? Well, in this particular patient, we started with a compromised airway being anticipated 90 square millimeters, only having 53.6. Wore the corrector for one month, the appliance is still in the mouth, and we were able to expand the airway six millimeters. But what's more important, it's 337 square millimeters. That's almost double what we anticipate the peak of an adult. So this number here is a number that we are in the process of having um, quite a few research projects to determine how stable this is, how long-term it is, and to see if that changes the trajectory of how our lives or how we age in the process. It's a pretty interesting concept. And understanding that maybe our norms or the scale we use to determine a normal airway is not accurate. I don't know the answer, but it's questions that are very interesting to start asking and seeing what changes we're making with these um, children that obviously will become adults and hopefully will be healthier adults for a lifetime. So here's basically what we just talked about. So you can see the initial, what the mean area is after one month and typically how we go about determining um, what a normal airway would look like. So let's kind of recap what we talked about. So we understand that mouth breathing and snoring is basically a result of extended bottle feeding or pacifier use, um, causes poor tongue position and abnormal swallow. Um, sugar processed foods also have an effect and poor oral habits such as thumb, finger sucking, lip sucking, tongue thrust all contribute. Now, what happens when we have mouth breathing and snoring? Well, it basically results in a compromised airway. So what's a compromised airway? It basically reduces airway, restricts airflow, reduces oxygen, increases CO2, affects brain function, immune and endocrine systems, swollen adenoids and tonsils, low tongue position, tongue thrust, underdeveloped dental arches such as overjet, open bite, and crossbite. So if we have a compromised airway, what does it lead to? Well, it leads to these outward symptoms that we associate with sleep disorder breathing. And again, some of these outward symptoms include restless sleep, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic allergies, nightmares, daytime drowsiness, et cetera. An interesting study is, so what does this all play on brain function? Well, here are some images, MRI images of the top three are images of a patient that had a normal night's sleep. And you can see the proper brain function that occurs. The second is basically one night of sleep deprivation. There is very little brain activity. I think you see one little spot here. Imagine, imagine what that is, hap what is happening um, with our patients when they don't get into the right sleep pattern and they're not able to get the proper sleep, the REM sleep that we associate with um, rejuvenating the body, the reparative sleep that is needed in order to function and to um, lead healthy lives. So this is just one area that's impacted because of sleep. We'll talk a little bit about the immune system, the endocrine system and the hormonal system that all um, basically are impacted again with sleep, breathing, and airway problems. 
So now let's talk a little bit about Healthy Start. What is, what is this treatment? How can we do it? Is it possible for me in my practice to be able to incorporate this? Um, maybe you see kids, maybe you don't see kids. Maybe I see adult patients. Everyone knows children that are affected by this. It's a great area. It is so much fun. Um, I enjoy every minute I am around these kids. They say the craziest things. Um, it is such a, a wonderful area to open your practice to or basically to incorporate into your practice if you are already seeing a lot of these children. And I'll make a mention, it's not that we don't treat adults, we absolutely do. Um, we treat, our oldest patient right now is 84 years old. So we do look at the adults. The, the issue with adults is there's no more growth. And if I'm going to provide an appliance, it's gonna be something that they're gonna to have to wear probably every night. Maybe not, maybe we'll make some improvements, but it's hard to guarantee something like that. Now, when I work with children, obviously we're working with growth and development and we can impact and make changes and more permanent changes because we're working on young children. Same with habits. The habits haven't been ingrained as they are in an adult. So we can basically change those habits and create new habits that will give them a healthier lifestyle. So that's kind of where our focus is, that we absolutely can address the adults. But just be realize, just realize the parameters and um, make the real, uh, more realistic kind of goals for an adult versus a child. So who, who is Healthy Start? Well, Healthy Start um, is a division of Orthotain. And Orthotain has been around for 51 years. And actually we have treated 4 million patients. So hopefully we've um, learned a little bit. Um, we've developed something that really makes an impact on the population and changing these kids' lives. So the series of appliances basically looks something like this. So if we have a child, for instance, that come in that's age five, well, you would be involved in the kid's treatment. And these three appliances typically would be the three appliances that that age patient would use. And typically we always start with a habit corrector because we're going to identify the habits and we are going to make those changes first because the habits can cause havoc on the development of the oral cavity. So we need to get the breathing right, we need to make sure the tongue is in the right position, the tongue needs to be in the upper palate of the mouth. So when we say the letter N, where that tongue rests should be where your tongue rests during um, non-movement. So I always ask an adult, say the letter N. Now, where does your tongue rest? during normal function. Do you rest it up in that palate? Typically they'll say, uh-oh, no, it's down low. Well, if it's down low, guess what? It's gonna lead to mouth breathing. It's going to lead to a weak tongue. It's gonna to lead to probably a narrow palate. You have a lot of issues that are going to occur because that tongue isn't in the right place. So if we can lift it, create the proper swallow, it's going to aid us in the treatment and the identification and basically creating a more functional oral cavity. So the second appliance will look like this, and basically it's going to guide the incoming dentition. And why do we do that? Well, we want to ensure that every tooth comes in straight because we're gonna use the natural eruption of teeth in order to expand the arches. If the tooth, if the tooth comes in straight, it's gonna put natural pressure on the adjacent teeth. So it's gonna start the expansion of the arch. So just with the four anterior teeth, I can gain four millimeters of expansion. Well, guess what? I can even get more expansion when I start with the Healthy Start Kids or the Habit Corrector. Well, the maximum I can get if everything went right and I got the most ideal age for that child to begin with is about 6.7 millimeters. That's huge. I would typically expect three to four, just because usually I see a child that's five years old, six years old, but we're gonna gain every inch we can. Now, will we be able to correct every child that needs expansion? No, but I know the statistics. 
I know the child that needs maybe six to seven millimeters or five to six millimeters, they could use a Schwartz. We can combine the Schwartz with this appliance and get that additional expansion that we need. And then they'll move into this system or the 2% that might need an RPE. And with that, we can actually um, utilize that and then incorporate and move into that um, treatment. So you can kind of see how we go. If we have a child that's 10 years of age, they'll use these two appliances. Um, a teen and adult, these two appliances. And when we start with the toddler, we'll start out with this and then we'll go because there'll be quite a few years before they'll move into what this appliance would be. So they would utilize this and move gradually into this age treatment and then continue through. So hopefully that's a little clear for you, but it's very simple and um, we will help you with the correlation and the combination of appliances that you will use. So we talked about Healthy Start addressing the root causes. And what are these root causes? Well, again, expanding the arches, establishing nasal breathing, training the tongue, eliminating bad habits, advancing the mandible to correct the overjet, encouraging proper facial and body growth, since lack of REM sleep impairs function of adrenal glands and secrete growth hormones. And we correct most orthodontic problems. Our orthodontic correction is not our primary concern. Obviously the health of the child trumps everything else. But sometimes I refer to orthodontic conditions as added outward symptoms. If you see a child with crowded teeth, don't look at it just as crowded teeth. Look at is why would they have crowded teeth? Huh, probably a narrow palate. Well, if they had a narrow palate, probably not, the tongue isn't in the right, right position. Tongue is probably in the low position, probably not a proper swallow, probably a mouth breather. If we're mouth breathing, we probably have seven other outward symptoms. So you kind of see how the logic goes when you see these orthodontic conditions and these outward symptoms that you can identify. So what I would say is the Healthy Start will identify these health issues and frosting on the cake, guess what guys? We're gonna be able to correct and address any overbite, any overjet. We're going to be able to intercuspate the dentition. We're gonna have a molar relations to a class one. We're gonna have all 28 teeth in place by the age of 12. We're gonna provide fiber development on the straight, uh, for on the straight teeth for stability. So as the teeth erupt, the fiber bundles will develop and they will anchor the teeth. So you can think of it as the teeth grew in straight and the fiber bundles developed into that position, or think of it as the fiber bundles are going to create the retainer for life. Either way, um, same condition happens. We get more permanent results um, and obviously reduce the chance for orthodontic treatment later. So this first appliance, the Habit Corrector that we're talking about, what makes it so unique is that we have the myofunctional therapy built into the appliance. So when we look at a Habit Corrector, look at the different features. We have these palatal tabs, which are basically used to widen the arch. So we're gonna create expansion by the tongue pressing against them and um, expanding those arches. There is a ramp here um, lingual shelf sometimes. I like to call it a ramp because it literally, with every swallow, the tongue is lifted, put in the proper position. These little prongs here also prevent the tongue thrust, but it also indicates to the patient when they should retrieve their tongue. At the same time, we have the ability to have posterior pads or no. If we add pads, meaning that it will be appliance that's designed with pads embedded, it will help close the open bite more quickly. We also have these lingual tabs that are on the um, bottom of the appliance that prevent the lower chin from drifting back. So even if you have a mouth breather, that will keep everything forward so that we don't have any possibility. It's another unique feature that we will have in the adults. In the adult appliance, the appliance can actually fit over braces, aligners. Um, it has all of these features in it. So we're correcting that at the same time that other things are happening. 
Um, we also um, use this sometimes where I, I find a lot of people that might have um, breathing issues or snoring or things like that. If, if we could just maintain that lower arch in a position that doesn't allow it to slip back and prevent that mouth breathing, a lot of these things can go away. So it's a great first appliance just to investigate that for a patient and make those changes. And um, typically um, the comments have been extremely positive that, wow, it makes a huge difference. I had no idea I woke up so many times a night. I haven't slept all the way through the night for a very long time. And, and, that, and that typically is what you see. So when we look at any patient, we wanna kind of see um, where the tongue placement is and proper swallow is part of it. It's a hard thing to identify unless you know the trick. So if we just have a little glass of water at, on the tray in the operatory, have the patient take a swallow, take a glass of water, you know, drink, drink a little bit. I would not indicate to a child that you wanna see if they have a proper swallow. You'll get everything but a, a normal swallow for them. So when they take a glass of water, you want to only see the lower portion of movement. You don't wanna see any facial changes. So typically they'll take a glass and if you see them trying to use their muscles in order to make that swallow, you already know the tongue is not in the proper position and they probably have an improper swallow. So this is an area that you can kind of inform a parent and kind of explain what is going on. And, it, and it's an important concept that even during treatment and during the process, you want to you know, have them take a glass of water, see how that's improving. But at night, just by them swallowing, we basically reinforce there is only one way that they can swallow in this appliance, and that's with lifting the tongue, putting the tongue in the proper position, expanding the arches, preventing mouth breathing, encouraging nasal breathing, preventing that lower chin from drifting back. All that happens automatically, and it happens with the swallow. So at night, we swallow one time a minute. During the day, we swallow two times a minute. So think about this. Just by wearing this at night, we're reinforcing the proper habits over 500 times. That's huge, 500 times. If you've ever heard of myofunctional therapy, great, great um, information, great exercises, great way to improve the oral cavity. The, uh, the hitch is the child has to do the exercises. And if we're requesting for them to do them 200 times a day or 50 times a day, it is hard. Um, a child, you know, children are cute, but them being able to basically monitor repetition is difficult. You've, you've all had the four-year-old, they've done it three times and they said, oh my gosh, mom, I think I did it a hundred times. They just don't have that notion. And unless a parent is working with them, it's difficult. Well, if we could create an appliance, which we did with Healthy Start, that function and that myofunctional therapy is occurring just by them wearing it. So it's a great relief, especially at night when these kids typically need it more than ever. So um, an interesting study of 222 participants basically looked at these outward symptoms and what kind of um, correction we see within the first six months. So for instance, headaches. Out of the 220 patients, we saw that 40 of them had headaches every day. And out of the 40 cases, we found that we had 98% improvement. That, that's, that's significant. Um, and, and you can go down and see what these are and see how, what the percentages of kids that had it, but then also look at the percentages of improvement. It's tremendous. Um, and you can see through this. This will be published shortly, so um, we'll be getting those articles out to you. So let's talk a little bit about ADD and ADHD. Um, interesting, so we all know what ADD and ADHD, epidemic. Oh my gosh, how many kids are on um, different medications? Um, if a kid is on one medication, sometimes we see them on three medications. Um, what is the dosage? Um, I always say, so what is the prognosis? 
are, are we correcting it or are we just putting a Band-Aid on it for a while? Well, that's an issue, but what's an even more concern is most recent research indicated that 85% of the kids that are diagnosed with ADD and ADHD have sleep issues. So why is that? Well, if we look at the criteria that we base our diagnosis of ADD and ADHD on a child, not a blood test, but a list of criteria, guess what? It's the same criteria we basically evaluate a child for sleep and breathing. Can they be misdiagnosed? Probably, looks like it, doesn't it? So the question is, if you have a child that looks like they have ADD and ADHD symptoms, investigate sleep first. It's easier. It is uh, you know, a, a diagnosis that can be assessed. We can look at the underlying root causes. We can provide treatment for them. And let's see how much they change. Might not be all of it. Might be 100%. But we don't know unless we identify and start treating the sleep and then see where the child lands. Um, an important um, research that has occurred with ADD and ADH, an important name to remember is Karen Bonick. She did a study of over 13,000 kids. And she found that sleep disorder breathing increases the risk of ADD and ADHD by at least 50%. ADD and ADHD patients have little or no REM sleep, but they have Delta sleep. Patients without ADD and ADHD have primarily, primarily REM sleep and Delta sleep. And in the research that we did over 501 kids, 25.2 cases were reported as ADD and ADHD. So important. Some unfortunate statistics as long-term effects of ADD and ADHD, 50% are held back one grade. 30% are held back two grades. What if it's misdiagnosed and it's actually sleep? Would it matter if I held them back four grades? No, they're still gonna be tired. Are they gonna be performing in school? No. So again, identify, look, evaluate sleep first. There was an interesting study that wanted to see what affects sleep, breathing, and airway have on IQ. And they found that if a child has a sleep and breathing issue, it will reduce the IQ by 10 to 20 points. So what is 10 to 20 points? Well, in my mind as a mom, I would say that's probably the difference of going to college and not going to college. Maybe other parents want to know what number, what financially is that really um, indicating? Well, they did a study for that too they found out that each IQ point represents $170,000 during the course of a, of a child's life. That's a lot of money. But more imp importantly, it's a lot of impact on a child's future, his success, probably his happiness. So these are all things to consider and to basically educate your parent in regard. So, now let's talk about how we promote growth and development. What's interesting is when we look at cranial facial growth, look at how much of the cranial facial growth is already completed by the age of two. 68% in male, 73% in female. We try to get, get these children prior to age 12 because at age 12, a lot of um, the growth has ended and the habits are more ingrained. So when we look at these kids, we're always trying to catch them before age 12. We want to promote the natural growth and development. As you can see in this, you can see the growth and development in these children. And these are what these appliances are doing. So let's take a kid, child. Here's a case, a, uh, a girl that was five years of age, um, a ton of issues, um, bedwetting, um, sleep issues, um, difficulty in school, grinding teeth. Um, these are all issues that she indicated. But look at what the appliance was able to do. Look at the amount of forward growth that occurred in less than two years. So with this appliance, with the Healthy Start, we actually get 54% more growth in the lower jaw than in the control sample. So that, that's an important statistic because that alone will impact the airway. And obviously it provides a much nicer profile. It allows the growth and development 
that should have occurred if everything in nature went appropriately. Um, we also look at class, you've heard of um, class three and you also heard of deficiency in both the upper and lower arches. So we have an appliance called the Max A and this is an interesting appliance that's literally going to take the lower third of the face and promote both arches in a forward direction. So here are some initial one month progress and you can see current. So you can see that progress that happens. Um, there are three tabs here. The patient pushes the tabs against, uh, the tongue against these tabs. There's no frontal wall, so the arch is free to move. And the lower portion brings the lower arch along with it. Interesting com concept. It usually occurs within two to four months, very quickly. Class three, kind of the same thing, except with this, we're going to promote the upper arch so that we can make the jump that occurs between prime be, between the class three and the normal occlusion. And what's interesting is once we eliminate the barrier that occurs, that obviously is impacting the growth and the development of the upper arch. Once that jump has made, we find that the growth continues in a normal fashion. So again, this typically takes two to four months to correct. Treatment planning, we'll go over diagnostic sheets. We want to help you. We are uh, the consultant that you probably always wanted in your office, but we will go through with you um, and determine the best course of treatment, provide you with the accurate appliances, give you the timing, when these should be used, when the next one should arrive. If you feel um, that you want a second look during treatment, you obviously have your consultant at your arm's length that can actually look at these cases and discuss them with you and make sure you're progressing. Let's face it, it's new. Everybody's nervous at the beginning. You wanna make sure that you understand what you're doing. You wanna make sure that there's someone who says, yes, you look great. You have about four more months. You have three more months. This is the type of assistance that we want to offer you. So let's do the fun stuff. Let's take a look at a couple of cases. Um, so here we have um, a sleep questionnaire. You can see um, what conditions were occurring. Um, this child has a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 out of 27, extremely severe. And you can see what happened, and this is after probably about six months, almost all zeros and ones. Here are speech issues, um, very delayed speech, didn't say anything up to age three or four. So let's see what he looks like. So you can see the case, extremely deep overbite, circles under his eyes, um, a little deficiency in the lower third. So let's see what happens. Here he is. He's just sleeping with the appliance. You can see the correction. Look at the correction and the overbite. But more importantly, let's look at the child. Look at his facial structure. Totally different looking child. The arches, nice, full, ability to put the tongue in the right position. Here we go. Great case. Here's another one, same deal. You can see all the um, symptoms that are there. You can see the deep bite. Here's the initial, he's still in treatment, but you can see where the progress is. Here's a child, deep bite, a lot of issues. Here she is at her end result, beginning to end. Here's kind of the progress you can see what the case looked like and you can see the appliance in the mouth, how we progress, what we look like. Here's another. This is an interesting case, a child. Obviously you can see a lot of circles under the eyes. Look at the deficiency. You can already see the very, very deep bite, rolled lip. This girl, actually her mother had jaw surgery and um, she realized by looking at her daughter that she had a lot of the same symptoms that she had growing up. So she wanted to start early. So she was put a, gone ahead and put into the Healthy Start treatment. She started it. So I'm gonna show you maybe four or five of, as she progressed with age. So here she is now, look at the deep bite. Look at the change in the face. Totally different. 
Look at the arches. Deep bite corrected. Here's without any type of retention. Let's see how the case maintained. Here's another case. Um, this case, snoring, bruxing, bad breath, ear infections. Um, I'll make a comment about ear infection. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Gelb Clinic, but in the Gelb Clinic, um, they were doing research on children that had um, tubes, ear, chronic ear infection, medication, nothing seemed to happen. They found a relationship with the deep bite and using the Healthy Start system within the Gelb Clinic in order to basically eliminate the deep overbite. But what happened was the tubes were basically um, put in an upright inclination. They were able to drain and the kids' um, ear infections went away. So interesting, ask about kids. Um, one of the questions says, do they have a lot of infections? Um, that can be um, strep throat, that can be ear infections. Um, you'll see tendency for these kids to have a lot of infections. So here the child is at the initial quite a good case. Here they are about a year later. Here's another case. You can see the severity, um, allergic symptoms. They had five. Um, you can see some of the other ones. You can see the progress. This is within a year. Um, the deep bite, you can see the arches expanding, the lower arches. Here's another case. Again, um, had many issues including snoring and bruxism, mid-treatment, 14 years later with no retention. Um, I'll briefly talk about an app. We have an app that is used in two purposes. One, it is available free of charge on um, the Google and the iTunes, and it is more of a promotional. It talks to parents about what sleep and breathing and airway issues are. It gives them a sleep questionnaire. It gives them a list of providers so that they can find someone nearby them. Um, when the patient becomes, um, it, it starts treatment, they will each um, get an app. With the app, it will indicate and it will ask them um, every night, did you wear your appliance? Did it stay in all night? Yes or no? Um, they will get a coin they can deposit in the bank and they get 30 minutes of game time. At the same time, a parent is also um, asked if any of the outward symptoms that they indicated on their initial have changed. So maybe the five becomes a four or it becomes a three, but they will keep that on a, a daily basis for you. Every Friday, we provide cheek retractors and we ask the child to take a selfie of them every Friday. So the parent kind of has a flip book of their progress and all of this information is also provided to you in your portal so that you can monitor your patients during the 30 days, 60 days that you do not see them. So it's a great way to encourage cooperation. It does help with collaboration with the parent. And most importantly, it does give you the awareness and the progress um, of what your patient's doing when you don't see them. So um, as I said, um, Healthy Start has been around a long time. We've treated 4 million cases. We are very concerned about the safety of our appliances. Just realize they're FDA cleared, no, la no latex, um, BPA, BPS free, phthalate free, no silicone. We monitor our appliances to a class two medical device. We want them to be safe enough that you can actually put them in your body and live with them. Hopefully we're not gonna plan on doing that, but you understand our concern. These are your children. I treat every patient like they are my own child. And I would never do anything to your child that I wouldn't do to my child. So I want to make sure that you realize that is our goal and that is our philosophy here at Healthy Start. So I'm going to um, um, stop here. I think, Susie? Yes. I don't know if we have any questions and maybe you can take us a little bit and talk about the digital and maybe some of the um, other social media things that are happening. So doctors know how to not only treat a child, but how to educate the community and how to educate your staff 
as well as yourself so that you become excellent providers in the Healthy Start treatment. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I did notice that there were a couple of hands up. So what I'll mention really quickly as I'm um, going into speaking a little bit about the digital education platform, if you use the Q&A, um, we'll be able to get to your question and um, hopefully answer them live if you, um, if you have time. Actually, let's see, um, okay, great. So let me share my screen. Okay, perfect. So one of the things that I wanted to mention um, really quickly is that um, I, I was just noticing as I was looking at our guest list for tonight, so Greater New York actually invited Healthy Start to speak um, at the Greater New York meeting on assessing and treatment of pediatric sleep-related breathing mm -hmm. disorders. And I noticed that um, some of the doctors who actually attended that um, course are, are on tonight. So thank you so much. I'm so excited that you guys joined us. And actually a couple that um, have you know, saw the presentation and I mean, the light bulbs clicked on and they're actually going to be starting our digital education course in January the 14th. So we'll be, I'm, I'm so excited to see your names and um, I, I'm excited to get to know you better um, in January when the course starts. So for those of you who have not heard about our digital education platform, I think it's probably the most popular way that our doctors are getting um, trained. I mean, we have, I think, over 150 doctors that are attending our November course. And so it's, it's just a great way to um, really train doctors from all over the world because you can truly do it. It's remote, so you can do it from in, at your pace and from the comfort of, of your home or, or wherever. So it's a six ses session digital education series and the way that it works is we actually email out a video series every Monday. Every, so you have the entire week to watch the series. The series is usually about one to two hours, so it's not really long, um, but it's a great overview um, for whatever that series is about. So there's different series, oral habits, sleep disordered breathing, facial growth and development, development of dentition, and so on and so forth. Um, the digital education course, every Friday, we have a live interactive study course. Um, study group. Kind of like this, we have a doctor who goes over the series that you guys just watched, um, but then we also have specialists that attend every study club, which is really awesome. So um, to talk about billing, we have a practice um, implementation spe specialist that join us that talks about um, how to talk to the patient, how to organize your office to ensure that um, you are very proficient and all of your staff members as well in Healthy Start. Um, it's just a really full comprehensive course and what's what makes it even more comprehensive is it actually includes two full um, two free cases so the entire system that a child would need to take them from start to finish is included two of those cases are included in the course and I, I think that's I love that it's um, it's set up that way because it gives you the opportunity to you know, hands-on, work with these two patients, go through the entire program of submitting their case, you know, seeing this these two patients um, um, begin and in the middle of their case while you're taking the course so that that way you're um, having, you're, you're ha you have that education going on while you're treating. Um, it's, it's great because you can ask questions during the study club. You also are, um, you also have access to a private forum that's only for our digital education and course attendees and in that um, digital um, forum, you actually can ask questions there, you can upload photos, you can network with other doctors. Anyway, it's really great. Um, it comes with a $3,000 voucher towards one of our destination courses. Um, and it's great because the destination course is for you and for three of your staff members. So all four of you can come um, and, and to one of our destination courses, which is a just another way of learning. I think that, you know, um, going through the digital course is fantastic and it's also great to attend the um, destination, so we want to give you the opportunity to do both. Um, I did, think I failed to mention, but this course actually includes all, this digital course includes all of your staff members. So it's not just for you, but it's for your entire um, staff. So there, as I mentioned, there's interactive study clubs, training on pediatric um, treatment of sleep disordered breathing, improper grocery growth and development, development of dentition, screening for sleep breathing and airway, increasing your patient flow. I mean, we're really all about um, 
helping you to reach out to your community to, so that they understand what you're doing and how you're helping children. Um, so I think that's so important to educate the parents and we're really all about helping you educate. You earn 18 CE credits for this um, digital course and then 16 more when you, um, when you attend the live course. And the really cool thing about this is that this digital education course actually complements the new ADA policy on sleep-related breathing disorders. And what that policy is, Leslie already went over that, but you know what that policy states is that it's really up to you to get educated. You should be assessing every single patient, and it's up to you to receive that education on how to do that. So as I mentioned, we have doctors who attend from all over the world and I'll just tell you a couple of things that they're saying about it we had a doctor from Australia who attended and he said the digital course was excellent all at Healthy Start have really got their act together offer resources others strive for but rarely achieve well organized passionate and supportive doctor in Canada I want to thank you and your colleagues for this amazing course I've been searching for a solid system to help my patients and this is by far the best most organized comprehensive course I've taken and a doctor in Colorado I have really enjoyed the course we have identified quite a few patients that will benefit from healthy start my business partners four-year-old is in the habit corrector because he's had swallowing problems and we've already seen great improvement in his eating we already have three more patients who are ready to start next week we can't wait to see their progress and the great thing about that testimonial is she was only three weeks into the course and that's really how it goes I mean you you're gonna start these kids off with those habit correctors immediately because when you sign up for the course we're gonna ship them to you so do you have them I mean, I'm sure that you already have two children in your mind that you know need help so you're gonna get them going you're gonna get them started next thing you know those parents are going to be talking to other parents about the changes that they're seeing in their children and before you know it I mean you will have those parents calling you and lining up at your door. Um, American Dental Association actually attended our course and said it was ingenious, which is pretty high praise, I think, for um, American Dental Association to say that. So how do you get involved? A couple of different ways. Of course, you can always call us, um, 844-KID-HEALTHY. But I'll tell you, if you register within the next 24 hours, we're going to actually send you that welcome package. We did offer a, um, a sh we want to offer you guys a show special, or in this case, a webinar special. You're going to get those two free cases. It's a course investment of $3,400, which is amazing because we give you that $3,000 voucher to attend the live course, plus we're going to give you those cases. But if you go online, if you go to openairwaydentistry.com, you'll go to a website that has all kinds of information about this digital course, and you'll see a lot of register now buttons. You just click one of those register now buttons, and in the promo or the um, discount air code um, area, you can put in the code airway and when you type in airway it'll give you three hundred dollars off of the course cost so um, anyway that's a special that we're running tonight and I urge you to take advantage of it if you want more information or if you want to if you have any questions um, that you think of later on my email address is slafredo at the start.com and I'd be happy to answer any questions for you um, I have on there now is the time and together we can make a difference because it truly is the case I mean you now is the time I mean you now that you have this information now that you realize that nine out of ten children are suffering from more than one symptom of sleep related breathing disorders nationally over 40 million children um, are dealing with this issue I mean you just you have it, it it's really up to to you guys to help and so now is the time and um, and really together we can make a difference it's it's really amazing to see um, the things that are happening and I, I just love it and I'm so excited to be a part of it and I'd love for you to be a part of it too I do see that there's a couple of questions let me click and see um, what those are um, Leslie I'm gonna um, bring you into the conversation if that's okay um, so there is a question um, and one of the questions is um, kids get cold regularly how do you prevent them from mouth breathing during those regular occurrences um, so um, I'm, I'm assuming the question is if they are having a cold do they have to wear the appliance and Typically, uh, obviously, we want the kid to be comfortable. If they are stuffed up, obviously, we want them to be blowing their nose. If they feel that it is too much, then we'll probably have them not wear it until they're feeling better. But kind of remember, if you miss a day, it's, it, it sets you back. So we don't want to miss too many days. Um, 
what's interesting is on the app, you'll be able to see if a child is not wearing the appliances. And typically we say, keep an eye on it, um, reach out to that family and make sure, you know, if Johnny isn't feeling well, obviously we hope that he feels better. And as soon as he's able to wear the appliance, um, we'll look forward for him to get back on track and we'll make up the lost time. Um, but also it gives you the opportunity to find out if the dog ate it, because if the dog ate it, obviously they're not wearing it. So we would rather know now than we would at the appointment. So um, back to the question of whether or not you wear it when you have a cold, probably not, um, depending how bad it is. If you can't breathe through your nose, obviously that's gonna be a problem. But I'll always remember, we don't wanna to be too long without it and we wanna get back on track. Um, some kids tend to have a lot of colds um, and their nose is always stuffed up that is probably an indication that they're a mouth breather. So what I would also indicate is get them in a habit of blowing their nose before they go to bed, before they put the appliance in their mouth, um, just to get them um, better situated and um, better compliance and obviously um, correcting the mouth breathing more easily just because they can breathe through their nose more easily. Thank you. So I'm sorry, Leslie. I was trying to unmute. That, that's awesome. And the other thing too that is, um, I know that it's kind of interesting with with my two my my two little girls. Um, it seemed like they were sick all the time. I mean, before they started actually wearing the habit corrector, um, they were they were sick all the time. I, I think back, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, um, they're hardly ever sick anymore. But what we did starting out is we would have them do some active wear during the day. So maybe while they're doing their homework, or maybe while they're watching their favorite television show, just to get that wear in. If you know, if at night they were having issues. I would, I, and, and to continue that point, um, sometimes I say, don't, you know, throw it in the mouth just before you go to bed because it is bigger. I mean, it's something else in your mouth, but maybe do it a half an hour. If you have a bedtime routine where you take a bath or um, read a book or something like that, put it in during those times. You can take a bath. You can take a shower with the appliance. It just gets them more comfortable with it and more used to it. So it makes it an easier process at night to um, adapt to yeah. learn. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. So um, I have another doctor. Um, it's a great question. This is a pediatric dentist, which is absolutely perfect in New York. Um, I learned about you guys at Greater New York. I'm looking forward to um, knowing more about it, and I am planning on attending the courses. Um, and so we were talking about, um, yes, just so just to clarify, Dr. Um, it, yes, it's $3,400 investment for the education course. It's a, Like I said, it's a six-series course, so it does go on for six weeks, but you are going to receive those habits correctors immediately so that you can actually start um, treating those kids um, as soon as you receive them so and then after that point we'll actually train you on how to submit the rest of the case um, the rest of the information that we need um, for the for the case and all that good stuff so um, but initially yes you can start them out with those habit correctors and then tonight of course um, in the next 24 hours um, we do want to give you that that special so um, be sure to Either, you can either email me directly and I can make sure I can get you set up or of course you can do it electronically through openairwaydentistry.com. So either way, whatever way works better for you. And, and I'll just say it, it's a great forum from the ability that you learn the material through video, obviously, but the Friday study groups are great because you have providers that have a lot of expertise. Um, we have special, um, individuals that come on with expertise in medical billing or um, staff implementation. So it, it will go through the whole gamut of it and it puts it in a setting that um, you, you are treating it, you have the hands-on portion, but you also have the ability to ask those questions and um, listen to maybe even other individuals that will respond to the question. So it's a really great environment just to really um, be solid on the aspects that we are addressing, but also, you know, some of those important questions of how you do you implement, how do you talk to a parent, how do you talk to a patient, um, what are some of the pitfalls? Um, when I gave my first appliance, the parent asked this question, I didn't really know how to answer it. What would be the best way to answer that question? So it, it's a lot of information, but it's really practical, and I, I think that's why the doctors respond the way they do to those digital classes. 
Yeah, thank you so much. That's, that's exactly right. So really quickly, I want to show you CE credit. How do you get your CE credit? Um, we'll actually be emailing them to you, so um, you, you should just receive them. Um, you don't have to worry about it. Although, if you have any questions or whatever um, in reference to your CE credit, this is the information that you'll want to use. Um, contact at thehealthystart.com, or of course, you can call us at 844-KID-HEALTHY. We also have a chat on our website, so you know, if by chance you're on the website and you want to reach one of us there, you can um, you can use the chat feature and um, it, it, it's all of all of, all of the Healthy Start staff members who are um, there answering questions. So um, we'll be able to answer your question or get you to somebody who who can. So um, I, I want to say thank you. I, I don't see any more questions that have popped up. Um, oh yes, um, I will take note of your email address and I'll put my Mac up as well. My email address, in case you missed it, is slafredo at thehealthystart.com. And I will um, take note of yours as well. And send you additional, additional information. So yes, if you need anything at all or you need to um, um, get a hold of me for anything at all or you have any questions about any of the things that we've talked about or if you even have a question for Leslie, um, you can email me and I'll make sure to get that question to her. So um, I want to say thank you so much for um, your time. Thank you for spending this evening with us. Um, I, I hope that um, you've left here with I, I know that you've left with a wealth of information. Um, I hope that it makes a big difference in just how you um, view things and, and every child that you look at, um, you'll see, you'll, you'll have this information in the back of your mind. And um, I, I actually hope that you'll come on this journey with us. So I thank you again. And Leslie, thank you so much for your time. You always, it always is, I, I, every time I hear this presentation, it, it's exciting to just, uh, it, it, yeah, anyway, so thank you. Well, it was my pleasure. Um, I, for all of you that I met in New York, we had an absolute ball. I mean, how amazing was it? We were actually asked to participate in the orthodontic portion, um, giving more information about sleep and breathing as well as the airway summit um, and the regular dental classes that were offered. So it was really a great experience. Um, we all love coming to New York. You have the best food ever. Um, it was just um, amazing. So um, thank you. I hope to see you all on the digital class. And um, until we are back in, I'm actually back in New York on Tuesday. So um, anyways, um, all is good. Have a great evening. Thank you for listening. And um, hopefully we're going to make you think a little bit differently when you see those kids that come into your office. So take care. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.